evening and welcome to Super Screens News at 6 for reaching you live from Lagos State, Nigeria. My name is Olamide Onka. We're glad to have you join us. We'll start the news with this story where President Mohamed Buhari has approved 30,000 naira as the new national minimum wage. The president disclosed this while receiving the report of the Tripartite Committee on the review of the national minimum wage at the presidential villa in Abuja. The report was submitted by the committee's chairman, Amal Pepel. He has also promised to send a bill to the National Assembly to effect the change from 18,000 naira to 30,000 naira. The Senate has mandated its Committee on Police Affairs to investigate the alleged assassination attempt on the Deputy Senate President, Ike Ekweremadu, and members of his family. The resolution came after Senator Ekweremadu narrated his ordeal to his colleagues at plenary on Tuesday. He also told his colleagues that one of the armed men has been arrested. In his ruling, the Senate President Bukola Saraki berated the Nigeria police for their alleged late response to Kuremadu's emergency calls and asked the committee to follow up on the investigations by the Nigeria police. As you say, it's under investigation now, but it's unfortunate the security situation in Abuja. But more disturbing is the poor response by the police. Um, I hope that. Uh, the police are not being partisan in the way they treat cases uh, of such. And I hope that uh, this chairman of the police will go and find out what exactly happened. We eventually caught one of them, and then the rest escaped. And then we were able to hand over that one to the police who are now um, investigating the matter. But the annoying aspect of it, or the, the one that's very worrisome, is at this point, I called the, office, the IG of police, his phone was off, I called some of his aides, I, whom I have their numbers, the phone rang out and nobody had replied to now. The Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project, SERAB, has raised alarm over alleged plans by the Senate President, Bukola Saraki, to increase salaries of Nigerian senators. SERAB who disclosed this in a verified Twitter page disclosed that Saraki plans to increase the monthly allowance for Senator to 15 million Naira, which is contrary to the Salaries Act. Sarap, however, urged the Senate President to suspend the alleged plans and put into consideration the need of Nigerians. Now, President Mohamed Buhari has appointed Abike Dabiri Erwa as the chairman and executive officer of the National Diaspora Commission. The Senate President, Bukola Saraki, read President Buhari's letter to members of the chamber at the plenary in which he sought legislative approval for the appointment. Dabiri Erwa, who is currently the senior special advisor to the President on Foreign Affairs and Diaspora, was a member of the House of Representatives. Meanwhile, the Niger State Governor, Abuba Kassani Bello, has presented a budget proposal of 159 billion naira for the 2019 fiscal year. The budget, which is Christian Budget of Sustenance and Continuity, was presented to the State House of Assembly today. It is 5.43% higher than the 2018 budget appropriation. And now the Prince of Wales and heir to the British throne, Charles, and his wife, the Duchess of Cornwall, Camilla, have arrived at the Buja. They arrived at the presidential wing of the Namdi Azikwe International Airport about 2 p.m. today, where they were welcomed by the top government officials. The couple's three-day visit to Nigeria is part of their nine-day tour of Africa. During their stay in Nigeria, the Royal Highnesses will meet with some of Nigeria's dynamic youths as well as traditional leaders, the business community, the armed forces and people from arts, fashion and charitable sector. This is the third time the Prince of Wales will be visiting the country as previous visits were in 1990, 1999 and 2006, while it will be the Duchess of Cornwall's first time in Nigeria. And now the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tukuro Burotai, says the failure of security agencies to undertake diligent investigations of cases in Plateau State 
is responsible for killings and other crimes. Borotai disclosed this when the governor of Plateau State, Simon Lalong, led a delegation on a condolence visit to the Hami headquarters over the death of Major General Idris Alkali, retired, who went missing on September 3rd on his way to Bauchi State. Boratai said several cases of security infractions in the community where the late Alkali's vehicle was found has been reported, but without diligent investigation. One of the vehicles that was recovered was as far back as 2013, and the investigation was never conclusive, and no action was taken, and the case was uh, at, at, at the end closed. That is to show that so many, almost all the security agencies in the state know what was happening in that community, and nobody bothered to take decisive action. And this is one of the bans of the security agencies across the country. If we are not decisive, if we don't take action on such things, the consequences are always grave. And uh, we will always be the victim instead of trying to protect ourselves and protect the society, the society will be at the receiving end and as well uh, the security agencies. And I want to believe uh, this incident of Major Al-Kali will be a wake-up call to all the security agencies, including the, 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 the military. We have a task force that has been there for several years, but still such things continues to happen. You know, it's highly unfortunate Reacting, the governor of Plateau State, Simon Lalong, decried the act of individuals taking laws into their hands. He however pleaded with the army not to be discouraged by the level of development. Now, when it happened in Plateau State, we knew it was a military affair. It now became a military investigation. The government watched keenly. Where we were supposed to help, we did our best. Our best was to reveal the identity of those who did this. I want to, on behalf of the government of Plateau State, extend our gratitude first for unveiling and bringing out the culprits. But it is unfortunate that it is coming in Plateau State at the time that you are also helping us to rescue peace in Plateau. These are part of the things that I know Mr. President inherited. We also came and inherited some of these things. But you have done your best in the armed forces to restore peace in Plateau State and with, our corporate, with the cooperation we are given when we had the unfortunate incident. I am sure it's one of the series of some of the problems that are still buried on ground in Plateau State. But our, on behalf of the government of Plateau State, we are here to condole you and the entire armed forces for the unfortunate uh, incident. But also to appeal that don't get discouraged with what happened. Please, we appeal that we join hands together, we'll always cooperate too, to ensure that if there are more of this, God will unveil them in Plateau State and Nigeria. The Plateau State Governor, Simon Lalong, speaking there. In other news, the federal government says it does not have the financial power at the moment to meet the demands of the Academy Staff Union of Universities, ASO. The Minister of Education, Adamo Adamu, who disclosed this to journalists in Abuja, said the crash in the prices of oil globally has affected the economic fortunes in other sectors of Nigeria, including the education sector. The minister also appealed to ASU to be mindful of the fact that all the sectors of the economy are competing with similar financial needs. ASU embarked on an indefinite strike over delays in the implementation of the Memorandum of Understanding the government agreed to in 2017, including to compel government to conclude the renegotiation of other agreements also collectively reached in 2009. And now the Academic Forum of the Islamic Movement of Nigeria, IMN, has condemned attack launched on its members by the Nigerian military and the police. President of the Academic Forum, Abdullah Zango, who con condemned the attacks while briefing newsmen in Abuja, urged all well-meaning Nigerian groups and people of conscience to bear on the authorities, President Mohamed Buhari, to release Sheikh Zakzaki, his wife, and several others in illegal detention across the country. 
The movement also vowed to continue its protest to demand the release of a leader, Sheikh Ibrahim Zaksaki, who has been in detention since 2005. They'll be very trigger happy to open their fire on us. But our advice to those soldiers who have trigger happy to kill their own citizens is that we shouldn't be their target. Let them go to Boko Haram. Last week, last week we heard that the, the, what I read in social media, that they killed, the Boko Haram killed about 40 soldiers and even more than that, and took away with many officers. Why can't they face them? They continue to say that we are armed, we have this thing and that, blunted lies. Well, I swear to God, before all of you here, I swear to God, well, if we are armed, we are, we, Nigeria, Nigeria army cannot face us. Well, lie, if we are armed, we have weapons with us. Nigeria, Nigeria army is too small to face us. With our courage and bravery, with empty heart, they are running away from us. Talk less of when we are having armed. The well, they know that we are not armed. Because they are cowards. They always face, how can we go and attack people with arms, with children, with our women? Little children. When we are performing our religious ceremony, how can we bring, bring out our even breastfeeding children to go and attack somebody with God, with empty hand? And they continue to tell the world that we are armed, we have bombs fabricated. Yeah, if they show. If they should show you people that we have arms and they produce some lies, some invented, I don't know, guns and all this thing. Yes, it is some people whom they have planted into us to use that gun, maybe against the security agents, so that they will blackmail us. If, if at all, that we, we, we have such situation. But situation of stone, throwing stone at them, yes. Stone is the weapon of somebody who is not armed. The movement applauded Nigerians for the objective responses to the illegal detention of Sheikh Ibrahim El Zakzaki. And now four members of the ruling All Progressives Congress, APC, and the House of Representatives have announced their defection from the party. They are Abiyo Dundada, who was moved to the Accord Party, AP, Samuel Williams, who moved to the Labour Party, Lawan Asao and Anka, who joined the People's Democratic Party PDP, while the fourth member, Lam Additional, defected to the African Democratic Congress ADC. You're watching Super Screens News at 6. We'll take a break at this moment. When we return, we'll give you some stories from the business world. Stay with us. Welcome back to Super Screens News at 6 and now for some business stories. President Mohamed Buhari says the federal government is saving a total of 24.7 billion naira per month as a result of the implementation of the Treasury Single Account TSA and the elimination of ghost workers from the civil service. The president who disclosed this at the opening of the e-Nigeria conference in Abuja said the contribution of the information and communications technology sector to the nation's gross domestic product has increased from 10% in 2017 to 11.8% by the second quarter of 2018. According to him, the enforcement of the use of the policy on TSA, the integrated payroll and personnel information system, and the bank verification number, and the impact they have made on the administration's public financial management reforms cannot be overemphasized. And now the Senate has begun an investigation into the diversion of $1.05 billion from the Nigerian liquefied natural gas and LNG dividend to augment the shortfalls between the landing cost and pump price of the premium motor spirit, otherwise known as petrol. The chairman of the Senate Committee on Petroleum, Senator Basi Akman, raised a point of order at the plenary to urge the lawmakers to probe the withdrawal and payment. In his reaction, the Senate President Bukola Saraki ruled that the committee should go ahead with the probe. With the President, the NLNG dividend account Proceeds belongs to the three tiers of government and comes under the Consolidated Revenue Funds account. 
Therefore, Mr. President, any unauthorized withdrawal from this account without the approval of the National Assembly or any other structure of government is therefore deemed to be illegal, Mr. President. I therefore seek the leave of Mr. President that to allow the Senate Committee on Gas investigate this withdrawal and other withdrawals and the way and manner the accounts of LNG proceeds is treated by the NNPC and report back to the Senate, Mr. President. Still talking business, the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, says it can sign crude for products and deals with Shell and ExxonMobil similar to the one signed with the British Petroleum BP last week. The NNPC imports about 70% of the nation's fuel needs, mainly petrol, via swap contracts at the corporation and as contracts known as direct sale, direct purchase agreements with 10 consortiums, including trading houses Vital, Trifigura, Mercurial and Total. It extended its existing contract to June 2019, but several trading sources and a consortium said they had requested new price terms is established. And now in the stock market, the Nigerian Stock Exchange in its documents and foreign portfolio investment report for September had shown that the amount withdrawn by the foreign investors in the third quarter was 23.59% lower than the 123.59 billion pulled out in the previous quarter. The foreign outflow increased by 27.60% from 34.31 Naira in August to 43.78 billion in September. According to the report, total transactions at the nation's bars reduced by 2.79% from 133.84 billion Naira in August to 130.20 billion in September. Transactions from January to September 2018 also increased by 21.3% to 2.007 trillion from 1.655 trillion in the same period last year. We'll take another break now. When we return, we'll give you some stories from the foreign scene and some sports stories. Stay with us. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is Super Screens News at 6, and we're broadcasting to you live from Lagos State, Nigeria. And now for some foreign stories, Turkish media says staffs at Saudi Arabia's consulate in Istanbul tried to dismantle security cameras to help cover the mother of Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi. According to the report, the Saudis tried to rip out the camera inside the consulate on October the 2nd, the day Khashoggi was murdered. They also tried to tamper with cameras at the police security booth outside the building. You will recall that Khashoggi, a former Washington Post columnist and critic of the Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, was killed in the Kingdom's consulate in Istanbul.